for the first review of this episode, we have Zapekiss Showdown Hall of Fame by Hi and Yolo and Round and ZT. So this is kind of an odd level to review, because I would consider it more a museum with a level attached to it, but I consider both to be equally really well made. I think I've mentioned more enough in the past how much I just adore Round's gameplay style, so I expected nothing less than some buttery smooth gameplay here. Glad to say my expectations were met. And, unlike what I think they're known for most, there's only a tiny bit of off-grid pieces here, and yet it still feels very round. But like, round as in the person, not like, round round. If you're gonna call this review biased because there's a depiction of myself in the level, you're absolutely correct. I'm joking. Anyways, this deco is actually really good though. Round has mastered this specific aesthetic, and I don't think I'll ever get bored of it. The statues of each player are as accurate as they can be, as I don't think I could recreate these complex cosmetics any better myself. This sleep guy globe thing is especially cool looking. Such a creative design. There are a lot of details I like here, but I don't want to spend the whole time going over each one, so I recommend going through the level yourself to appreciate it all. About the actual gameplay part of this, I already mentioned it's good, but it's really good. So smooth, so elegant, so fun. There's not much else to say about it, I just enjoy it a lot. So there is very little I found I disliked about this track, but I guess I will mention how the start is a little awkward to understand. There is an amazing sign telling you to hold left. If people don't get that, then that's on them. But what I'm talking about is the landing onto the track itself. It's very easy to slide out, and the soul start makes the countless resets here kind of annoying. I don't think this was meant to be played a lot in lobbies, more so just an intermission level for the showdown competition itself, but if it does end up in lobbies, trying to get a good time with this start, I can see that being quite frustrating. Overall, that's all I have to say about this level. It's a great museum to showcase the winners of each showdown season, with a legitimately fun and smooth track to go along with it. Oh, and don't think I forgot YOLO. I did find all three nuggets, and I hate to admit this one took me the longest to find, and I nearly gave up. Fun hunt, though. Alright, let's see the next track. MMM Ubururu by Wombat. This review is written by Just Maki. This is quite the technical transitional track, with some rather unique uses of banked pieces for jumps. There was a bit of trouble even just finishing the map, but it was also difficult to find the optimal lines as well, with how weird some of these transitions are. I do have to say though, that the decoration and theme looks very good. So, this map has some rarely seen rotation tech, which is quite satisfying to perform, Maki approved. Nailing the landings on these jumps is quite nice, most notably when your wheels make no noise, the first jump especially. A lot of maps in the workshop stick to using on-grid jumps and transitions, and there's only so much you can do while limiting yourself to that. Just because of how unique they are, off-grid transitions are quite hard for the average player to perform, although if you know what you're doing, you can make some crazy stuff in the editor, this map included. The lines and dots on some of the jumps are quite helpful in guiding the player through their weirder transitions, although the optimal line may be slightly different than what it tells you. I rarely like void decoration. It can be very stale and bland, but it can be executed well. This level's theme points me in the direction of some sort of deep sea, and in fact the void complements that well enough. Even if it's only three pieces of deco, the colors work together quite well. The lighter pastel tones with the complementary contrast in green is really cool to see. One could say the checkpoint distribution is uneven. In this case, because it was an MMM map, there's not much you can do about that here. But it does stand out, and can be a small issue in other tracks where people want to see their split times more frequently. There are arrows on the ground, but most of the signage here is actually presented through these green wall ride pieces that flow around the line you're supposed to take. 
They work well enough, but near the end it can be hard to see you're required to make a left turn here, as the other green pieces in the background can distract the player into thinking they need to go a different way. This only barely matters, but it wouldn't have hurt to put a wall or blocker of some sort in this last corner to avoid any confusion. This turn down at CP3 is fairly awkward. It's hard to tell if you're supposed to go higher to reduce airtime or just get a lucky bump on the inside line. Speaking of the inside line, there's some deco that can get in the way of where you want to go further along in this section, although I think it also works as a good indicator for the player to drive differently to enter this transition smoother. The loop coming out of CP4 is quite difficult in having to dodge the deco that bleeds into your path. A guide would have been appreciated in this case, as they are seen in other places in this track. This is most certainly blind. Players need breathing room after loops like this before you shove them into the next section, so more room on the left side here would have helped a ton. Loops being in first person is a good help, but you should only have the loop itself be first person. As the game is currently, leaving the player in first person for the bank transition right after is no good, as you can't tell if your wheels are sliding out or not. And finally, you can miss checkpoint 5 if you're sweaty enough and take a very inside line here. Your character is just small enough to fit under this gap, so having the landing a little higher to remove the gap would have been a solution. Overall, for being an MMM map, it is still quite enjoyable. The learning curve is actually pretty fun for the faster players. Even before finishing for the first time, I was still min-maxing my lines. Its difficulty might scare off some of the slower players, but I would say this is definitely above average for an MMM map. Now, let's move on to the next one. Wormholes of the Void Serpent by Gearwork Dragon First of all, this is a pretty interesting color palette. I do like it, but I think it could have been applied a little better, more so in the neon paints than anything else. The theming is quite unique. The neon rings strewn about are simple but effective enough, and the floating islands add some nice variance to the other floaty decoration. I do have to say there is a lot going on visually, but I'll go more in-depth on that later. The gameplay is unique, sometimes in a good way, other times in a bad way. The good, for example, is this beginning section. This first corner is pretty blind, and this arrow points you in the entirely wrong direction, but besides that, this whole section on its own is pretty fun to optimize. Banked pieces are just great for this. They give the player lots of opportunities to try different setups to improve their times. The signage is good, arrows, dots, all work well enough to guide the player throughout the track, but there is a distinct lack of consistency with how often they are placed. The little alternate paths are neat, and they're not trying to be hidden in the slightest. They're easily seen in photo mode, which is pretty good. And this little guy at the end is pretty cute. I really like the idea to turn the track in this section into the serpent itself, although these eyes scare me. So there's a bit to talk about here. To start, mesh. There is so much mesh here, and it is way too hard to look at. Don't get me wrong, I like using the mesh paint in my tracks, but this is for sure overdoing it. And I'll advise you, if you're going to use the mesh paint at all, I definitely recommend the SS, whatever that stands for, version to reduce the overall busyness. Another thing to mention is boosters. I definitely feel like there are way too many in this track, and I would instead prefer just some insurance ones where they would be needed. This booster especially. Always avoid putting boosters straight into turns, that is just bad design to speed up the player right into a corner when they aren't prepared. And I would say this greatly matters, as it affects the overall enjoyment of the track substantially, and in most cases is entirely unneeded. And that applies here too, there's a booster right after the turn. I don't know why you would need one before as well. And the decoration. Somehow, this track is 6,000 pieces, when it could just as easily be around 2,000, or even 1,000 for that matter. 
It all comes down to these way over-detailed clusters of bamboo? Whatever they are, they do not need to be this detailed, especially at this small scale and with how much it's copy-pasted all over the place. I mean, just try to look at it when you're driving the track. There's too much going on to even parse any of the shapes there. And this is even more of a problem when coming around this turn, I go from 165 FPS to 48. Too much detail and too many objects for what is only background decoration. And I would like to extend this thought to all the plants around the track. The small scale makes them so much less significant and contribute less to the overall decoration considering the amount of pieces they're using. It makes sense, big pieces cover larger areas, and this level would definitely be a lot easier on the eyes if all the plants were just simpler. Overall, I feel like this is a really cool idea that could have been nicer on frames with some better optimization. I've learned a lot throughout my time building, and I think one thing I have a pretty good knack for is seeing a level and judging whether or not the piece count is justified. This one is surely not. Maybe if there wasn't any frame drops I could set this thought aside, but dipping down that much in FPS is just unreasonable. Okay, let's move on. Harmony by Zoman. This review was written by MDPL. Starting off, I went into this track expecting it to be fairly difficult, as usually, the mapper's skill level reflects into the kind of levels they make. But this level actually surprised me, as most of it isn't too bad for the slower players. The background decoration is really nice, and the colors work well together. The long, worm-like structures of rock do an excellent job of filling out the space, and the sunset skybox is just gorgeous with the gold look. This pagoda-looking thing is also just super well-made, and works as a nice addition to the otherwise samey rock decoration. If you think your level is too bland, adding a singular unique element to stand out like this one helps a lot, and gives players more to latch onto for a theme. About the gameplay, this additional bank piece floating above the one you land on is just genius. Not only does it make lighting it up easier, and the jump a million times less blind than it would be, it's also just a great way to incorporate more decoration into the track itself. I find that adding useful features such as this one can definitely help inspire more decoration ideas. And the use of the concave Saucig road pieces near the end make for some fun gameplay as you jump from one to another. Having a required one is super smart to let the player know they can jump off the edges of these pieces, and so most will probably immediately notice the jump to the finish as well. It's actually really smart game design to introduce features and then later let the player apply them where they want to. So there really isn't much bad to say here, but I will start off by mentioning the spiral down here can be a sudden difficulty spike for the less skilled players. The ward is pretty small, and if you're not used to being precise, this can definitely catch you off guard coming from a relatively gentle transition. The loop section is also another difficulty spot, as the fan doesn't cover a large enough area to keep the player up, meaning there's a fairly specific line you need to take to stay on. The fan is scaled to accommodate this issue, but from my understanding, you should never distort the fan shape along one of its axes. This usually causes issues with hitboxes, and the visual of the fan may not align with the area of effect it actually provides. Overall, I love how there are lots of little small improvements you can make for time saves. Speed conservation still applies to the track. And as with a lot of tracks, you can break and go slower if you want to just complete it, which is appreciated, as there can be tracks with punishing speed checks if you need to take it slower. Okay, let's see the next review. Foggy Winter by Graham the Guy. This review was written by Lexer. Immediately giving me some round vibes with the gameplay, this track includes some similar transitions as Autumn Temple, which we reviewed in a previous episode. Aside from that connection, I managed to complete it on my very first attempt, which definitely says something about the visibility, even getting the small jump at the end since it's so clear. Ah. 
This level is very open and clear in its gameplay. There isn't much going on elsewhere to distract the player from knowing where to go. Anybody should be able to complete this with no problem, but this being a gravity map, there is much optimization to do here for any skill level. And yet, despite its simplicity to complete, the optimal line is actually quite precise if you're good enough to perform it, consisting of swerving precisely around corners, getting as low a jump as possible here, and even flipping off the side of the last ramp smoothly into the finish. The fact all the time saves here are skill based and not just luck are quite welcome. The wood on some of the turns definitely increases the engagement and don't feel outright mean, just a little more challenging. And since the level is so easy to complete, it's also a great opportunity for new players to practice and understand how the wood material drives differently. Some of them, notably after checkpoint 1, are definitely harder with the presence of wood. You can skid out pretty easily if you're not careful, but it's not enough that it can cause you to fall off the track, thankfully. The simplicity of the track layout combined with the relatively low average speed can make this map boring for some players. The worst offender of this being the end section. It's just a straight line and sticks out as a mostly AFK part considering the tightness of the previous sections. And the decoration is nothing special, not to say a little deco is a bad thing. But the track itself is leaning more towards being boring, and the little deco adds to that feeling for sure. If there was just one other asset floating around, it would make it so much better. Only having one thing copy and paste it just seems too low effort. And lastly, the checkpoints could have been a little larger, as the borders of them almost encroach on the inside line you want to take as a racer. Though, oddly enough, the last checkpoint is missing a border like the rest of them. That's why you'll see other creators extending their checkpoint force fields a fair amount away from the track to leave enough room for players to get those precise inside lines. They do technically block some inner wall rides, but there are many other less obtrusive ways to achieve that anyways. Overall, everything about this track screams easy to complete, difficult to optimize, which makes it a great choice for players of any skill level. Although the replayability factor may be held back by the fact it's quite short and isn't particularly interesting in the decoration aspect. Alright, let's move on to the last review. Up next, we have Goose Chase by Sox242. So, I have played this map before. It's not often that happens, but when it does, I find myself seeing a lot of new things I missed when I initially played the level. This one in particular was the second cup of the day map I ever participated in. I still think about that one round getting top 3 with that horrible time, but enough of that. This is some exquisitely smooth gameplay with a nice learning curve for competition. I was about to call it off-grid gameplay, but this is more of a build it normally and then rotate it slightly kind of situation. It still makes for some really cool transitions so... This color palette is great. Gives me some strong Trackmania 2020 vibes with the black and wood paints. The gameplay, as I said, is super smooth and fun too. There are many ways to improve your time here, which makes it great for playing in lobbies, as well as, obviously, for cup of the day. The decoration is maybe the epitome of simple but effective. As when I first saw this level, I thought it looked amazing, and I still do. Going around in photo mode, all the parts used are relatively simple, and yet the way they are used just makes this look so good. I love the sense of scale presented here. Nothing feels out of place, it's just pure abstract goodness. A small note I want to mention is thank you for blocking these inners, because if they were there, they would have made this an agonizingly more difficult map for Cup of the Day. Well, there isn't a lot I can say here, but I can for sure try. To start off, one could argue the beginning needs some guides for these jumps, as newer players might not understand completely what they are required to do here. But that can just be easily excused by the fact this was a map made for competition. Leaving more lines open for players to experiment is actually a good thing in this instance. But this loop could probably benefit from a first person switch, or maybe a more defined road edge, because I did find myself falling through here a fair amount trying to minimize my turning and not being able to see properly. It is pretty blind. Normally, I would say black is the worst color to define complex shapes, especially when drenched in shadow, and I still stand by that. But I think Sox was well aware of this issue, and the choice to surround these sections with the wood paint helped so much. 
This one though, still a little hard to see. Although I'm not even sure you can think of this as any other shape, because what other part would transition you smoothly here anyways? Overall, I think this is a great map for competition. Both for fun and lobby use, and more seriously for a cup of the day. I think it has a perfect balance of difficulty, where it's not too hard to finish, but still exciting and engaging enough for the fast players to really push them to improve their times. And that was the last review! Thank you for watching this episode of ZMR, I hope you enjoyed! Remember to join the Discord in the description below to submit your maps for review in an upcoming episode. I've been Lindsay, and I'll see ya!